The Fraunhofer Institute is Europe's largest application-oriented research organization with research efforts geared towards people's needs, health, security, communication, energy, and the environment, forging the future to significantly impact on people's lives. It's a must to use electron microscopy because uh, structures are getting smaller and smaller. Uh, system integration has led to structural widths of a few 10 nanometers and there's no way to uh, image such structures with visible light due to physical uh, constraints. And electron microscopy is capable of doing it. So the electrons can be considered as a wave with a certain wavelength and uh, the higher the acceleration voltage, the shorter the wavelengths. And this, this brings us in an, in an area where structures of some 10 nanometers can be easily resolved in transmission electron microscopy, even uh, in the angstrom range. We particularly like is the uh, life milling mode. So that means we can use electrons to see uh, the progress of the, of the milling front. That helps us uh, addressing a failure in a microelectronics part or component. And also there's a number of uh, unique detectors, like the ESB detector, which is used to detect dopant profiles and, and which was also uh, implemented uh, in a software developed together with, with ZEISS for endpoint detection. That's important if you want to have a TM lamella of a certain thickness. When we are after root causes of failures in microelectronics parts and components, we usually start with some non-destructive testing, including X-ray microscopy or scanning acoustic microscopy or lock-in thermography. And based on these data, we uh, use the ZEISS instruments, uh, the crossbeam, to pin down the defect uh, even more closely uh, by using other uh, technologies like probing technologies or like uh, electron beam uh, induced current imaging, uh, stuff like that. And then eventually the task is to do some target preparation. That's where the focused ion beam enters the scene and we are using it to get as close as possible to the defect. By using the currently available equipment we can use uh, we can help our partners to, to solve their problems. We can isolate the fault, we can find the root cause for a failure and so forth. But on the other hand, as we are investigating so many different samples, and sometimes it's really like uh, finding a needle in a, in a haystack, uh, as we are investigating so many samples, we get a fairly good idea on which are the missing links in the workflows, which are uh, detection principles, new technologies to be implemented in the workflow to get uh, even more information. What we need for the future is uh, technologies that uh, brings us to the failure in a very short time and uh, at the same time we need very reliable technology because if there is one failure in a, in a component we need to get this uh, prepared and to analyze this. And I, I think that's uh, one thing uh, from our background, which we would like to see in the future, that workflows are getting more ha harmonized, so that different technologies like some coarse machining using a laser, some fine machining using some kind of ion beam are getting integrated into, into our workflows.